So I'm with Tim Woodson, who is a West Yorkshire-based musician um, who's got an album uh, released, uh, an album release event this Friday, um, which will be at uh, Meanwood Cafe Barn at Meanwood Urban Farm in Meanwood in, in North Leeds. And um, Tim is a guy that uh, I've known for many years. In fact, he's a friend of my son's. <laughs> Um, but he's just got this amazing album that he's just been he's, he's produced and we've been playing it on BCB for a few for a couple of months now actually um, on Bradford and beyond and it's been great fun to be able to uh, hear Tim's songs in advance but the official album release date is this coming Friday I'm very pleased to say we can speak to Tim now welcome to uh, BCB Tim um, thanks very much John thanks for having me so um your uh your uh, what's the best way to describe this your kind of musical moniker is hevelwood yeah um so just tell us what hevelwood where they were where that comes from sure well hevelwood um when i was first putting this project together i was quite deep into the whole is a, a hebrew word that means the the book ecclesiastes uh um it's as uh, meaningless like a striving after the wind, um, oh, yeah. and uh, that meaningless is uh, hevel in Hebrew, more closely related to smoke or vapor. Uh, and I just felt like that was a word that quite fit with my sort of artistic temperament. Okay. So that's... And the wood is half of your second name, I suppose. Well, I mean, it, it is, uh, but, <laughs> but I also I think because I'm, uh, you know, I, I started off doing uh, a very folky kind of style of music, and I felt like hevel wood sounds like a uh, it sounds like a thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, so Great. I felt like that was that was a good way of combining those two worlds. Do you do you have more than one musical guy? I mean, we're going to be talking about the particular musical guys of the album that's going to be launched on Friday. But do, do you do you do you have other musical guises other than have? For years, this has been my main project, really. So yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much everything I've been putting putting out through Heverwood. Um Okay. And I think, you know, this project's been uh, really quite all-encompassing, so I, I think I've not had much need for a new one, but, you know, I'm, I'm always, always up for new projects. So okay. <laughs> we'll never know. So I'm going to call your uh, your chosen genre electro-folk. You might want to call it something sure. else. Uh, well, why, why, why particularly are you, um, you know, what, what, what attracts you to that particular form of music, that fusion, that lovely fusion? Sure. Well, it's funny, really. I, I first got interested in folk, and particularly traditional folk, through one of my favourite singer-songwriters, uh, Anais Mitchell, who uh, put out a few years ago a, a traditional folk record as a duo record with a, a guy called Jefferson Hamer. Um, and it's the first time I'd come across this style of music, this sort of traditional English folk. Uh, and it's such a weird... <laughs> Uh, things so it's really it's you know it's part of our heritage but it's a very uh, it feels very foreign at the same time so I really wanted to kind of explore deeper in that um, but at the same time a lot of the sounds that I'm interested in when I'm recording are a, a lot more experimental influenced by people like Holly Herndon or um, uh, folks like uh, Sufjan Stevens oh yeah uh, things like that. So I think you know, it's really this this sound is just try, me trying to fuse this this very sort of backward-looking traditional folk world with a very forward-thinking uh, electronic style of production. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I quite like the tension of that as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just in terms of um, the sources of your material, is it is it a mixture of traditional song and original song? Yeah, definitely. So um, this album uh, in particular is a fusion of two different practices. I, I, you know, I've been writing songs uh, acoustically for for quite a number of years now. Um, but during the pandemic, uh, in particular, I was really getting into this traditional folk electronic style. And so this album is me kind of coming back to my old material and reworking it in that in that new style and then combining it with a few traditional songs that I feel like thematically uh, can sit quite well with the, the other material I've written. Because what I'd done is I'd written, some of them were written in a more folky style previously and right. I'd made them less folky, I think, is where I've, I've gone with it. 
I see. Uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, so Tim Hevelwood, um, is that just you, or do you have regular collaborators who've contributed to this album? So the album is pretty much entirely me, with the exception of uh, there's an instrumental track called Pastoral Spectre, which I wrote with a Massachusetts-based composer. Uh, called Josh Kirk, Mm -hmm. and he, we were kind of trading some ideas back and forth, and I had this idea of a sort of post-apocalypse pastoral kind of thing, you know, um, taking, again, a a very old form, um, or a a kind of quite a romantic, um, ideal, uh, idealised form of uh, of music, and then reworking it in a a more dystopian context uh, so he went away and wrote this piece of music and then he sent me uh, some recordings of it and uh, and then I went and ruined it with a load of drums uh, <laughs> it was the idea I think I think there's about six or seven drum tracks on there just you know threw all kinds of stuff at it it was quite excessive but, uh, so so you in inverted commas ruined it to the extent that you thought you put it on your album absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's very good very good no I I I, I, I um it's a very interesting piece of music. I'm going to use the word interesting, uh, sure. and not in a not in a discordant way, but in a it's it's got a few surprises in it. I found so um, yeah. our listeners can watch out for that one. So just what's that one called again? Pastoral Spectre. Okay, I think that might be track four. According That's right. To, yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, so will you just be playing? So on on Friday at the at the launch. Will you just be playing by yourself, or um, will, will you have backing tapes? Will you have keyboard players who will be doing clever things in the background? How will that work? Well, the part of the issue of having developed a, a very studio-based electronic style over the lockdown is I've no actual framework for how to do that live. Okay. So what I've decided to do with this launch is to rework all the material again, but for an acoustic trio. Uh, Uh So I'm doing the show with my very good friends, Tim and Hannah. Uh, Tim's playing guitar and Hannah is playing trumpet and uh, and we're all going to sing some harmonies to it. So it will be, if you're a folk fan, it will be perhaps a bit more familiar than the album is, but it's still very much the same compositions and the same material. Okay, so that's going to be obviously different to the album. Is is that... Is that a whole other album that the three of you could record at some point? <laughs> I mean, possibly. I, I mean, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with how it's sounding. And, and Tim and Hannah are such great, such great musicians, and they've really kind of got behind the material. So, you know, maybe I would like to like to do that in the in the future for sure. Okay. Um, I think my project for next year is to uh, is to work out what my live context is, uh, taking on board more of the electronic aesthetic. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be a, a longer term project, but for now, yeah, this is. I've just been. Do you know what? It's just been really nice to get in a room with people again and start playing. I think I've just been enjoying that. Um, so, yeah, Great. I hope other people do too. Okay. So you've not got any other gigs lined up apart from Friday. Not yet, no. Uh, but I'm hoping to book in plenty of stuff in 2024. Okay. Now the the kind of challenge for anybody these days who's uh, made an album uh, unless they've got a major recording contract which i presume you don't have um is 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 how you get your stuff out there um in the in the great big competition uh with the rest of the crowd um so have you have you got a strategy for um for promoting this album <laughs> tim <laughs> uh, yes you are right i don't have a, a, a particularly uh large production arm behind me who are, okay. who are doing the promotional side and it's hard work you know yeah. i think it's uh, it's it's been really hard i think uh um i mean i know a lot of artists are doing just doing the best they can um so i've you know been pushing it out through press releases but actually do you know what's been really nice is uh a folk like yourselves running um uh, local radio um there's a, a couple of uh, online and local radio shows that have been playing the tracks and uh and uh, you know it's been really beneficial really great uh hearing it in context with other people's music as well and, and they've already built up audiences and things so that's a great thing uh, I think that in many ways there's no real substitute for touring in terms of building a following as well right. uh, but yeah it's hard graft <laughs> yeah yeah and you're doing most of it yourself sounds that's right like, yeah, yeah. yeah okay uh, so Actually, just one thing one little thing I've got coming up this might not be usable but I'll just give you give you an answer anyway 
Uh, one little thing I've been working on uh, is a online kind of do your own version of one of the tracks which oh, I've been wow. working on with a friend Jack who does uh, he's a long time collaborator of mine he did this uh, podcast Old Tunes Fresh Takes with me as well uh, but he also does video game sound design and uh, we were playing around with a few ideas and uh, we've, we've kind of come up with this concept of uh, a kind of online interface where you can create your own arrangement of uh, one of my tracks which is uh, the last one on the album yellow handkerchief yeah uh, so we've kind of separated it up and you can you can kind of mix in your own textures and your own drums uh, using the the arrangement and, and kind of create your own version of it so I'm really excited to get that out there and see what people make of that amazing well that, I've never heard of anything like that before that sounds remarkable okay well all the very best with that um, so just in terms of what happens on Friday with the launch does that mean that the the tracks land on particular streaming platforms uh, and I don't know it it's available in HMV and other good record shops in <laughs> in hard copy what actually happens on Friday well, you can get it from Spotify you can get it from Amazon Music or Apple or wherever you get all of those services uh, but you can also get it from Bandcamp uh, where you can uh, you can pay for it <laughs> as well if that's wow. your kind of bag um, and uh, I've got CDs as well so I can, right. I can if you buy them you can buy those off from Bandcamp or I'll have some with me at the launch so you can pick some up pick them up there and there okay uh, 10 pounds brilliant so just remind us uh, when and where the launch is so the launch is happening at the barn at Meanwood Urban Farm in North Leeds and that is at uh, 7.30 on this Friday okay and it's free of charge free yeah. of charge bring your own beer uh, but there'll be coffee and uh, stuff on sale the coffee at the barn is uh, next level so uh, if the- <laughs> Come for the coffee, stay for the music, I'd say. Okay, brilliant. Really good to talk to you, Tim. Thanks very much for your time today and all the best for Friday. Really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, John.